everything that Putin said and his uh, his face is like I, I I really wanted to to stop these feelings. I don't know how you feel. Yeah. Uh, I clear understand how much work you did to find all these places in the movies to in to work with this I have uh, to uh, to to make this movie it's really bravo bravo I I, I have no idea how and I I can imagine how uh, the director work with this material mm -hmm. it's so hard and during the invasion already, yeah. it's how it was. There was, uh, Kornei always tells uh, one story, he says, um, I mean, also in the end he says, I don't know how to end the movie because the war is still going on, uh, Kiev is being bombarded every night, uh, last night was the record number of drones from the war, uh, so the war goes on. And uh, he said at some point, what, what would happen if maybe a rocket would strike my house, because then if the SBU, you know, the Ukrainian Secret Service, would uh, look through the rubbers, they would find like terabytes and terabytes of Russian yeah. propaganda. And wow! Said, how, will I said, how will I explain to, to, to authorities what happened? So um, I think it's um, what is generally also for our editors, um, it was really hard to watch all this material um, because it was being watching it over and over again. And um, Russian cinema is made to be watched over and over again. It is different from European cinema. It is a format that is being shown on TV. It is being shown on platforms. It's being shown in the cinema. It's being shown in the public space as well, on screens. So it's something where people are currently, uh, no, so not currently, but always exposed to it. So it's something that has a repetitive aspect. And I can say they are so good in propaganda. They are so good. And also, I, uh, from the very beginning of the uh, invasion, uh, I wrote an article about the Russian propaganda mm -hmm. and about uh, uh, when it started. Because yeah. uh, I remember in 2009, I, I just gave birth, birth to my baby mm -hmm. and I, I feed her. and. Uh, I, like and here the uh, television, 2009. Just imagine, just no, no revolution yet, no, no any some you know ideas about the war or about something bad for Russians. And uh, as my father don't know, doesn't know Ukrainian, yeah. he saw uh, sees the television on Russian. Mm -hmm. So I heard how they um, lied about Ukraine every single news on their television yeah. and i said i on that moment i asked myself what why why the, the, it has to be a reason why they do it mm -hmm. if they don't have um, any other problems in their big russia so to to talk about ukraine every news that they have mm -hmm. Um, and uh, then I understood, yes, and uh, now I, all puzzles, it's like, uh, come together, mm -hmm. and I understood that uh, it was a long way they prepared to this, uh, the, to this war, and it was really, uh, how, how we can imagine, uh, imagine like, uh, okay, let's do the war. Mm -hmm. No, it's not like this. They, 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 years and years, they make this propaganda and uh, prepare the, the way. Uh, and also, uh, from the very beginning of the invasion, do you remember Mariupol just, just was occupied? <coughs> and in Bulgaria, in the Russian house, uh, they immediately showed the film Azov. Showed the film Azov. Yeah, yeah. And make like the vision, make the film about their view on what is what's happened there. <coughs> so they have a lot of money uh, of doing this propaganda. Yeah. So we are just in shock. Uh, we we cannot uh, uh, explain it. And, and twenty days of Mariupol is mm -hmm. not uh, um, done uh, yet. And they they showed this this movie, you know, like mm. and in um, Sofia. So they do it for the other countries. Yes. to explain their view on, on this point. And I think that also Kornihi used uh, the opening uh, shot of the film is a movie called Sosnipek, The, the Witness, mm -hmm. which is a movie, a Russian movie about their version of Bucha mm -hmm. massacre, which, which is basically a version where Ukrainian Nazis are doing the crimes and where Russia comes to save everybody. And um, 
These are movies that are right now being produced and are being put forward uh, uh, in Russia. They have a very big budget, they have a big format, and these movies are really being made uh, at this moment to, to, to also to influence uh, the debates. And um, I think what was really interesting, because now we have showed the movie, it had a premiere in Ukraine in July, we showed it in Luxembourg, in Germany, it was uh, showed at a special screening uh, this week also in Canada, in Toronto, where we have a huge uh, Ukrainian community, as you even heard in the propaganda film by the Russians. And a lot of times we hear um, where Western audiences listen to it, and then they come to us, to the filmmakers, or to the to, and and they ask us, but, but I used always to believe this. I used to believe that Americans uh, worked in Donbas with Ukrainian Nazis and with uh, and NATO helped Ukrainian army in Donbas, and uh, I used to believe uh, that there are so many uh, stories like this, and uh, also this Kivan Rus, which is like such an amazing way how they are spinning the history mm -hmm, in, in mm -hmm. this ending. Um, where people came like, but I read this somewhere. I read it even in news reports. And so you can actually see that um, this, the movies are a very firm pillar of Russian propaganda. It is, um, they are being made to be multiplied mm -hmm. and the lies are being made to be multiplied. They are not being made to tell you like, you have to believe exactly this. No, that's not how they are made, but they are made to, to give you maybe the most destructive force that exists in life. For me, it is doubt. If you doubt something, you will not move forward. If you doubt something, you will mm -hmm. uh, stagnate. Mm -hmm. And what they are basically doing is they are like inseminating everyone with a little bit like a little grain or a little seed of doubt. Everyone. Mm -hmm. And so next time when you hear uh, Ah, as of uh, US, USA is lifting, like it was in summer, uh, USA is lifting the ban uh, on uh, heavy weapons for Azov battalion, then people are starting like, yeah, but they are Nazis. I heard that somewhere. Azov are Nazis. And so you have, as a journalist or as a Ukrainian or as somebody who is interested in the truth, you have to go back again 10 years and explain the, the, the context. You have to go back and explain that. Yes, there was a, 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 there was a nationalistic aspect of uh, of Azov. It was uh, depoliticized. They were de-radicalized. Uh, there was a movement and the military unit. They were separated. So you spent like a day explaining to somebody who already has this doubt and who already is not believing you. And this is why it is so 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 destructive when you when you when you use this destructive. Uh, energy of like this seed, like this little seed of a doubt. And already you are fighting like against it. And we see it not only with the topics of Azov, we see it with uh, the Nazi ideology, mm -hmm. we see it with uh, this uh, very weird Russian view or this, it's like a nevrosis or uh, psychosis of, of, of Russians to the, about this history of the Ukrainian mm -hmm. statehood. And, uh, Maybe it is because Kiev uh, is much older than Moscow. I don't know. <laughs> yes, it's but, true. Uh, but, because but, of jealous. But, because yeah, of uh, who yeah. knows? But but it is being used as 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 also making these small doubts. And Ukrainian history is complex. And Ukrainian history in the Second World War is also very complex. I come from a very small country. As a Bulgarian, actually. Yeah, yes. yeah. And, and 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 every nation in the Second World War has a complex history. Uh, maybe even also in the United States, where you also had uh, uh, Nazi sympathizers. They are, you, f you find images of uh, Madison Square Garden sold out with uh, Nazis. Uh, it existed. It existed a Nazi party in the U.S. before, uh, before Pearl Harbor. Um, so history is complex and history is gray. It's not black and white. But they're using one little aspect of yeah. history and they're blowing it out of proportion. Um, and um, and they are using it to just re have a repetition of this. And once it is being, you know, as, as a journalist, I always say there's nothing is uh, stronger than the written word. Once something is out there, once something is said and written down, it is so hard to go against it. It is so so hard to to try to fight against it. And um, this was also why Carney made this movie, because um, he wanted just to, um, to let these images speak for themselves. Um, 
because now we are showing this at festivals and it's funny because some festival directors said us this will be the first time that we are ever showing Russian movie because <laughs> we never show Russian movie but now we, because of cinema we are showing Russian movies and um, but I think this, the, what I really appreciate about Carne about how he does films is that he leaves enough space for uh, the visitor to, to look at the movie um, he's not uh, using many arguments and trying to beat you down with the arguments but he's showing you these extracts of these films and uh, as you know many of these films are also illegal uh, to show in Ukraine and uh, it was a big mess for the editors and the sound guys to find this material uh, have it in the same format, have the sound uh, edited, have the color balanced so it was a huge mess to, to, to make this film and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, we always said like poor, poor, poor Cornet and the editing team because <laughs> you have to sit there and listen to this over and over again. And um, but they're okay, don't worry. <laughs> so, so they, they didn't turn into some. Uh, they didn't they turn in, into become crazy. No. Yeah, they didn't become crazy. The, we leave that to Steven Segal and all yeah. the others. Yeah. And uh, one more so interesting and uh, sensitive uh, thing mm -hmm. in this movie about Radnyansky. Yeah. Uh, because now he is uh, so pro-Ukrainian. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is Ukrainian. First mm -hmm. of all, he's from yeah. Kiev, yeah. but uh, he worked in uh, Russian uh, um, cinema uh, in Russia. Mm -hmm. And when invasion started, uh, he just changed himself mm -hmm. and him uh, his uh, um, opinion. And he started to write about uh, war, like yeah. uh, to, yeah. to tell people. And it's so strange to see, but he helped propaganda to make propaganda, like w where were you before? Yes, I agree and I think, as I said, the Corny's uh, big achievement is that he leaves this question or he leaves these feelings to the audience because he shows the facts. Uh, it's clear that Rodiansky used a lot of Russian money uh, to make these uh, historic reenactments uh, based on fiction. Says money is not smell. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Um, I come from Luxembourg, so, um, <laughs> you know, banking and so on. So, yeah, don't get me started. <laughs> but um, but we can talk about Russian money in Luxembourg as well later in the in, in, in the in, in, discussion. In, in the other discussion. But, um, you know, Corneille, he does, he leaves this to you. He shows you the facts. He shows you how the movies were being produced, how the Russian money was doing fake historic movies in Kyiv, on location, in Lviv, and are uh, actually uh, using the historic backgrounds to, to write lies. Um, this is something that Mr. Rodinansky has to answer himself. I cannot answer to that question, honestly. Um, but I think that Corneille, he lays it out. And, I mean, as a as a human being, I'm, 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 I'm always saying, like, we also don't know what we would have done in his place. Uh, at least I think now he did it more right than before. But, of course, there is a, a question of uh, historic, uh, of, of, first of all, of ethics, of morality, but also and of, this uh, of historic redemption. historic moment, yes. Yeah, and of uh, redemption. Now yeah. it's so, um, how to say, uh, profitable to, to be yeah. on Ukrainian side. Um, because yeah. in Russia you cannot do any movie now for and uh, not for propaganda and it's like you, you, or you yeah, yeah you, you are can, connected with you Western can you world. can but you won't be yeah. uh, at Cannes and you won't be in the big festivals and yes. uh, so for some people that's uh, and the, the, the reason. I have a question uh, yeah. in this context uh, about the festivals uh, mm -hmm. uh, so many people think that uh, Russian culture we cannot um, mm, I cancel the Russian culture uh, because because it's a culture. Yeah. But we, we see in this film and in everything that they use culture for propaganda. Culture yes. cannot be outside of this because yeah. it's yeah it's uh, a lot of uh, financial support from Russian mm -hmm. uh, uh, government as we see. Um, and uh, now our Ukrainian directors met a lot of Russian directors mm -hmm. that are. Okay, op in uh, opposite side, mm -hmm. but uh, and w they they participate not with Russian flags, for example, mm -hmm. but they want to uh, build this myth about 
uh, good Russians, mm -hmm. like about uh, their mm, and uh, show the all audience that they are um, victims of this war or yeah. two. Yeah. Uh, so it's so dangerous for all the situation because uh, the world will change their uh, attention, not not to put it on Ukraine, mm -hmm. to save yeah. the Ukrainian uh, government and yeah. democracy and everything, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, to say uh, and make this, you know, a dangerous uh, feeling that we yeah. have to uh, save Russians also, because yeah. they are good, you know, it's Putin, not Russians, mm -hmm. it's Putin. Yeah. But all these people in the films that mm -hmm. actors, film yeah. directors, where, where they were before, like, yeah. uh, do you have... Um, like, did you ha have you met uh, some Russian director on festivals and how you? But well, um, I think in the, the movie also talks about this with um, the um, story of uh, Parejnikov, the, the actor, mm -hmm. um, who is a. I mean, you, you know Parejnikov as an actor. He's a, he's a very classic actor. He also plays a lot of stage theater. Are they persona uh, non grata in festivals? That's a good question. You have to ask. I guess it depends from the festival. Uh, I mean, we've seen it uh, at Toronto Film Festival or in Zurich that they have invited this Russians at War film. So I don't know if they are. It depends, I guess, on the festival. But what I wanted to say about him is that he was, um, I mean, for me, you cannot be an innocent bystander if you're shooting at Ukrainian positions in Donbas as they showed in the, even if it was probably like incination, but still like going there with the army, wearing, yeah, a a vest of the, yeah. wearing a vest of the press, going to the army, taking a gun is already a problem. <laughs> I say it as a journalist, but um, then also this incination, so you cannot be innocent, <coughs> that's for sure. You, you are not innocent. And um, to answer the second part of your question is, at the festivals we see a lot, I mean, we get a lot of replies from the, from the, from the audience and often it's the last question where somebody says, I'm a filmmaker from Russia, mm -hmm. uh, I am here in Europe for some time now, I don't go back and uh, I have been against Putin, but it's important to, to say that there are other voices. That is uh, a question that, uh, it's never a question, it's more like, it's a statement we hear quite a lot uh, from Russian artists, but... Um, For example, tomorrow yeah. morning in the same, maybe this is the... Uh, yeah, uh, Prakletia. Uh, ah, Prakletia. Uh, yeah, cursing uh, for this <laughs> cinema that in the morning before our uh, mm -hmm. festival starting, they had uh, cartoons of Russian cartoons. Uh, with Chiburashka and all this, and I was shocked, like, oh my God, and people come and they buy tickets yes. and they watch it. Of course, I mean, you know... And uh, they distributed uh, all these uh, films and no prob and nobody has problems with this here in Bulgaria. I mean, what is the most famous and most streamed and most distributed ch children show and in the Medvedi world? And it's Masha and the Bear. It's Masha and the Bear. Um, I have not looked into this, but there are very problematic episodes where she's wearing uh, the head of a border guard, of a Russian border guard, and fighting off the other animals who want to come in her yard. So I, I think there's some very problematic things there. But, it's um, archetypes that they put in the uh, children's mind. Of course. I mean, uh, we see it quite uh, prominently in this last uh, cartoon mm -hmm. that we are showing, which is, I mean, uh, Rasia Zamir. <laughs> the, the explanation it's, 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 of it's, what's happened. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's absolutely uh, crazy. And um, it is also um, yesterday in, in Germany, somebody asked uh, us also uh, why, um, the, why do you see also the, um, the, the German kid? And it's because they are mocking this uh, Normandy format where Germany, France and Great Britain try to, to negotiate the peace of uh, Minsk or mm. the Minsk agreements. And um, yeah, so um, cinema is really, uh, it's an essay or, and, and it's really trying to, to, to just show this as it is and to, to leave you enough space to think about it and I mean... To be as, careful. Yeah, as a, as a Western producer and a Western journalist who has worked a lot in Ukraine and still is a lot in Ukraine and... and, and yeah. Has, uh, uh, I, uh, been also, one one more fact. Yeah. Uh, in 2000, I, I don't remember which year, but not not so mm -hmm. far. Uh, they start they they start to have uh, a channel which is called uh, Winner, w winning Winner Pobeda. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. yes, and all day long 
they put films about the war, about the Second uh, yeah. World War, mm. and uh, create this myth that we are the second um, uh, strong uh, army, and a lot of films that uh, use this, uh, you know, Hachol, and yeah. uh, all these uh, things that it was shown here. And uh, I really uh, also noticed it, and I said, oh my God, and I t told my, my mm. father, uh, turn it off, please. I, mm. I really, it's so irritated. It's just film. Why? Mm. It's not a Russian news that it's propaganda. Yeah. It's just film. And I, I asked him, don't you feel this propaganda in the, in the film? Yeah. It's so covered, like it's so nice mm, cooked. Yeah. For, it is. for any audience. And, and for this is also something where we get a lot of questions. It's also... People ask us, yeah, but there is a lot of American or British or German films who also get money from a defense ministry. There's the Pentagon is financing movies like Top Gun or, or all these uh, movies. And generally that's when, you know, Hollywood movies use uh, resources of, uh, of the army when they are showing some expensive uh, scenes with planes or with tanks or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but the main difference is that... Um, these the, the 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 army and the politicians don't get a say in in what they have to do uh, so and also the the tone of the movie is not to give uh not only just a theoretical pillar but also uh basically a manual how you have to genocide and other people mm -hmm. and, and and this is the main difference and so so if you come out of top gun the worst that can happen is you want to be like tom cruise that's all already tragic maybe mm -hmm. but uh if you come out one of these Russian movies, you know that uh, there is an enemy. This enemy should be killed, and it's and it's fine to have this enemy killed. And um, this is the main difference because this is not the message of uh, these uh, American films. So, um, so yeah, we have to be careful and not dismiss it. If from a Western, if we put on like the Western glasses or the European glasses, we maybe look at this and we're like laughing or or it makes us uncomfortable. But um, if you are, I'm going to use my words quite carefully, but if you are just, if you just, if you are in Russia and you just want to see this and not the other things that are out there, because YouTube works in Russia, mm -hmm. uh, most uh, Google works, uh, most of the news sites are working. So if you're just choosing to have this, it is also a conscious uh, decision that uh, this is what, uh, this is the, the life lie you want to live and uh, this is how you want to proceed in the world. And, um, and so we have to be careful to not only just um, see the aggressor as victims, I think, um, and this is also very important. It's, the system is too big to mm -hmm. not be informed, and, but it's choosing not to be informed. Okay, we have no time. We have to run to discussion panel there. But if you have last question well, from the audience, sure. Uh, uh, you said about all the uh, things uh, um, in, uh, in, the, in the cinema, but uh, are, are such propaganda in, uh, so for example, ballets, opera, and so on and so far, in, in other types of uh, sure culture. in theater. In, in Russian songs and everything, I can tell you <laughs> this. Yeah, so and so on. Yeah. I, I've even seen videos from ballet schools in Russia where they were just dancing with a Kalashnikov. And I yes, like, yes, <laughs> yes. Like it was How they kids. connected this, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's kids that they are playing and with, with They started from kindergarten. They, yeah. they, had, they are so good in propaganda, I tell you. So that does mean the propaganda works everywhere, not um, only yeah. in the movies. There is, yeah, there's a lot of new uh, theater plays. There's also a big effort right now from uh, the Russian cultural. There's a, there's a, the, the, prom the, the, the promotion of the Commonwealth of, of Russian Federation culture, which is basically owned by the FSB and which is organizing a broad uh, theater, comedy shows, uh, poetry readings, ballet, whatever. And so they're showing the classics, but they're also showing new content. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is subtle. It is subtle, but still, as you said, uh, you will see uh, uh, also this installation, um, which are now considered in Russia a patriotic act. If you are like kindergarten teacher, you are uh, making the kids dress up as tanks or as soldiers. And um, so, yeah, that, that, that thing happens as well. But generally, if we see something, it is... 
uh, being curated from, uh, from, from, from the Russian Ministry of, of, of Culture and uh, it is organized with this money in Europe. So yeah. That's, it, it's not a coincidence that you're seeing it. Okay, let's continue there.